Welcome back everybody to the full finals here at DreamHack Denver. It is 2017 and we are getting to the nitty gritty stage of the tournament. We have up next an incredible match for you. Of course, it is going to be Envy versus Splice. The Titans are going to clash. But it is not just me on the desk. I now have Elam Elamite. I usually say Elamite, but he gets angry at me and he punches me <laughs> in the ribs every time I do. It's Elamite. And of course, we have Nighty as well. Guys, welcome to the desk. You excited for this one? Oh, I'm absolutely excited for this one. We've got the defending Atlanta champions going up against Team Envious, who finished third. Kind of had uh, a few internal problems at that time, if you recall, uh, with Eric's injury and other things within the team. And so now I think we will finally see Envy performing at their best. And do you think that Snipe Down is a key factor uh, to this team, Nighty? Oh, he's huge. I mean, he's definitely planted. He's, he's gotten to a point where he's not just the Snipe Down of old where he can slay. He can do it all, and he is such a big factor in winning tournaments. So to have him out like he was in Atlanta, I feel like was a, you know, a, a big deal, but I spoke with him just, just a second ago, and he said that had nothing to do with it. He's not making any excuses. Uh, they're coming to this event you know, and they are ready. They are taking that top spot. Well, we are having a lot of fun here on the Xfinity desk, of course, but we want to hear from you guys at home as well. So make sure you get involved on social media, of course. Use Twitter, use the hashtag HCS or at HCS. You can see the tweet possibilities below. Now, just an update from the floor. Supremacy are currently 2-2 with straight ripping. And we also saw Vex get taken down 3-1 by Infused. So Infused move on to top eight and actually play the winner of Straight Ripping versus Supremacy for top six. So that's definitely going to be exciting, but we need to hear about, well, this next series coming up. Of course, Envy versus the likes of Splice. And I want to talk a little bit about Snipe Down. So let's have a little listen to what he had to say about this series. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Strongside, and I'm here with none other than Snipe Down from Team Envious here at DreamHack Denver. I mean, just walking into the arena, how do you feel already? I mean, I feel great. I'm always uh, excited to get to these events. I've been to a bunch now, but every time you get that feeling of, all right, this is it. This is what we put all our work into, and, you know, we came prepared, and we're ready to play. I think since Victory X has stopped competing, you may be the oldest competitor who has competed at the most events out of every Halo player here, without a doubt. I think Roy and Lunchbox might still have me, but I'm not sure how long that'll last for. And you know, I, I'm okay with taking that title. Uh, I'll keep uh, I'll keep the reign going for the older generation. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Lunchbox, Roy, and yourself definitely the the top three guys uh, competing at the most turns. Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about your team, but let's not talk about here at Denver just yet. I want to talk about what happened in Atlanta. Your team placed out of the top two. You placed consistently in the top two for so many tournaments. What happened? Honestly, it was our own fault. We didn't prepare the way we needed to. And with how good the competition is anymore, it just goes to show you that the teams that practice the most and the teams that prepare the hardest are going to you know, do the best. I was extremely upset as a big competitor, but it's just a testament that goes to show you how good these other teams are and what it takes to win these events. Would you say that kind of like sparked an even bigger fire in you and your entire team after kind of having that brutal loss against Optic Gaming? Absolutely, like we got annihilated by Optic. After they beat us, we thought they were gonna win the event and Splice goes out and beats them. So, you know, that really goes to show us where we're at in comparison at that point in time. Uh, the new Pro League was right after that. We kind of got into it right away, knew what we had to do, came out with a fresh mind, open minds on what we needed to work on. And I think, you know, with how we performed this Pro League, we didn't lose a single match. I think that goes to show, you know, what we did to improve. So you said, you even you thought Optic Gaming was gonna beat Splice after you guys lost. So. What are your thoughts on Splice and them kind of having this like rise to glory in these very short amount of time? You know, I think there are a lot of momentum based team. Every one of them was firing on all cylinders that event. It was impressive just to watch them play from a crowd perspective. So, you know, going into this new Pro League season, they kind of, you know, struggled a little bit in comparison to where they were at. I don't know really what was going on with them, but we haven't really played them in like three weeks. They've been kind of dodging us in scrims a little bit. They haven't really been playing Optic either. So I don't know if that was a strategy on their end, but I'm really curious to see how they come out and perform after that big event win in Atlanta. How do you think you're going to fare up here on Saturday and Sunday? I'm extremely confident in our team. You know, we uh, have some struggles online every now and then, but when it comes to this event, you know, it's all work, it's all business, and we're here to perform. We're here to show that, you know, what we did in Pro League is going to be consistent here at the event. I, you know, I'm looking for a first place finish. I mean, that's, I'd, I'll be disappointed with anything less. Any teams you're particularly, wor like, not worried about, but that you're looking out for other than Optic, Liquid, and Splice, anyone that you got to just be like, hey, we still got to be playing at the top of our game. 
You know, I think LG is a solid team. They are, you know, a team that is based on momentum as well. I think they're going to match up against Splice, and I really don't know who's going to win that matchup. Like I said, I haven't been able to watch much Splice, and I, I really think that they're a team that could come out and cause some upsets. All right, well, that's going to do it from us here on the floor. Back to you guys. Slapdown seems fairly confident uh, going into this, and I don't blame them. Envy looking really hot coming into this tournament. What do you think their expectations are? Do you think this might be the tournament for them? Do you think they can take these full season finals? I absolutely think they can. I mean, this team has had a very clear mindset this entire Pro League season on what they want to do and how they want to come in here and perform. Not only did they just you know, fall short of that second place finish that we've seen from them falling to Optic a few times, but they've even been able to do it. Now that we've seen Splice and Liquid come in as contenders here, I think that's really motivated Envy to step up, and I, it's hard not to be confident in them. Definitely. I mean, you're going to be confident when you've got a squad like Envy's, but we've heard from Envy, so let's have a little listen to the side of Splice. I believe we have an Xfinity speed session with Shotzi, so let's see what he had to say. Hey guys, this is Shotzi from the Splice Halo team, and I'm giving you an Xfinity speed session. Um, our actual enemy to play against would be Frosty because uh, me and I have a really similar gameplay. Winning a 100 meter dash, I would have to go with my teammate Ryan. He's just been playing basketball and he has a quick moose. MG Daytona in Florida because the beach was there was amazing and the slingshot. The hardest thing about being a pro Halo player would have to be time consuming with school because of the, uh, the work. And then the best part would have to be um, being recognized from just the, the competitive scene. Uh, to win my first tournament in Atlanta was actually pretty shocking, to be honest. I didn't believe it at first. It felt like a dream. But uh, yeah, I was just very proud of myself and my team. My parents are very proud of what I do because I love playing video games, and they're just very supportive of it and proud of me. I would have to go to Denver Broncos because I just wa I love watching football more than NBA. No, I've never met a girl through gaming. I like Barcelona because of Messi and this is crazy stuff that he does in games. I would have to go with LeBron because of the fact that he put his he basically carried the team by coming back from a 1-3 deficit. Thanks for watching guys, this is Mitch Shotzi from the Splice Halo team and make sure you follow me and my team on Twitter and catch us later. So we've heard from players from both teams, we've discussed both teams in their single forms, but we haven't discussed the actual matchup that we have in front of us. It is a mammoth game for you guys at home and for you guys in the arena as well. Envy versus Splice, let's talk a little bit more about these teams then. So we'll start with Envy, Elamite, this team potentially could win this event if they play to their best. But do you think there is anything we should be looking out for in particular? Any players that we need to, to focus on? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When we get to this far in the competition, when you're looking at Splice, Envy, when you see Optic and Liquid playing, I mean, Envy, all four of these players are absolutely incredible. It's hard to pick who's the best one on the team. They all step up at individual different games. Snipe Down, obviously, performing phenomenal lately. Mikwin, he's been one of the best players in my eyes this entire season. Pistola, clutch game five, wizard every single time we see a match up on that and I think you know there's a still there's a lot of weight on Splice's shoulders if anything here to try to come out and take down Envy. And they will be going up against uh, Splice then Nighty. What can you tell me about these these young guys these young guns who have just impressed us so much throughout the entirety of this season? Well I'm not really somebody that follows teams. I like to follow individual players. I like to you know uh, kind of stay true to the people that I like but this team is somebody that I've loved to follow. Just the young guns, seeing their talent, seeing their meteoric rise. It, it's something that is just a lot of fun to watch. I watch their scrims probably more than anybody. I watch Boo Boo Doo Boo, and it's just, it's fun to see them interact. They're good friends. You can see they're, they're just always have fun with each other. And that's what it comes down to when it, you know, going to an event, you know, you, you feel so much pressure in, that, in this tournament setting. So to have your best friends right next to you that you can just laugh with, makes it all much easier. And before we take a look at the series layout, I just want to get a confirmation of a score from the floor. Straight Rippin took down Supremacy 3-2. to two. So it is Straight Rippin that will move forward and face Infused 
for a top six spot. So unfortunately, Supremacy bail out of the competition at top 12. Now, let's take a look at what the maps are going to be in this next series with Envy versus Splice. Coliseum CDF to kick things off, followed by Eden Slayer, Plaza Strongholds, Truth Capital Flag, and if we need it, Rig Slayer as well. Elamite. Anything that stands out to you as a, as a good game for either of these teams? I mean, Coliseum CTF, you've got to look at it as being a good game type for both of these teams. The so one thing that stands out is Splice versus Optic in Atlanta on this was one of the most ridiculous Capture the Flag games in Halo 5 I've ever seen. The back and forth standoffs that they had with everyone in both teams, all eight players making amazing decisions the whole time. So game number one yeah, definitely, I think, favors Splice here. Game number one is sure to be a good one. If you're in the crowd, make some noise here at DreamHack Denver. We've got Envy, we've got Splice, and we have Elamite, and we have Nighty. Take it away, guys. All right, here we are looking at Coliseum Capture the Flag. Thank you so much, Gaskin. And I want to start this one off with uh, Snipe Down here, who is going to be the player. I'm putting a lot of responsibility on his shoulders to step up and perform here and make sure he can lead this team past that top three finish that he had previously. Yeah, and you see he's playing this slow. He listened to the call out, got the cleanup on Shotzi. He's doing a fantastic job here, but you know he wants to stay alive in this scenario. He wants to get that sniper. The sniper's in the hands of Shooter. Uh, let's see if we can see what he's going to do with it. This is a great location. He can get lots of sight on the entire map and be able to help his teammates. Yo, absolutely. Now he's in the base, pushing to the elbow, getting those positions where he has lots of lines of sight. Just look, he's got two members in front of him, which means the enemy team is going to be shooting at the plate pulled closer to them and giving him an opportunity to actually line up some of these shots. Yeah, and this is... You know, you typically see this is the place that they want to be, um, but, you know, it's really hard when you get that pick. That's perfect. Getting that kill on Duke is going to allow his team to have numbers and push up here on the rocket side of the map. They're probably going to want to run it towards the window and get as fast a cap as possible. They're going to be spawning over there in the cave, and they're going to fly over on the snipe side. Excellent snipe on Pistola there by Shooter. And look at this, the flag's already moving back to their base shooter. Now, I uh, kind of uh, incorrectly, or maybe shouldn't have popped up so quickly there, gets taken out. That sniper is down, and this is exactly what we were talking about. The flag standoffs that we can see from Splice here. And now, look at that kill. V3 members going down. You've got Boo Boo Doo Boo and company pushing in for a return. That flag will go back at home. But now he is pushing in to capture that one. And already, less than two minutes into this game, we are already seeing a lead here from Splice. And look at that selfless play coming out of Splice, where they're just playing in unison, where they both jump on top of the return, get the return instantly, play the objective-minded play style, have Shotzi here with the snipe. Let's see if he can pull off some amazing things. I mean, I sure enough, you can bet on it. I wouldn't be surprised if he connects on several different headshots here. He's only got one shot, though, in that sniper rifle, so I spoke a little bit too soon there. But new rockets are also up, so this is a really crucial moment. Not being able to hit those sniper shots. That flag is down at home. We may be seeing a 2-0 lead already. And Splice, like I said, this is a team that played this game type in Atlanta just absolutely incredibly to beat Optic Gaming, and you're seeing them repeat that same kind of performance. Yeah, they don't hesitate at all. As soon as they get a pick, they're immediately on the other side of the map, and they are all over the objective right now. But we've got rockets in the hands of Boo Boo This is going to be really important. Oh, absolutely here. He's got plenty of rockets left here. I don't even know if he, yeah, he's only shot one of them so far. He likes to reload those. Playing a little bit of defense here now for his team. As you can see, several members of Splice start to die here. Shooter grabs himself a stick, and Shotzi gets another kill. That's three dead for Envy again. Splice is just manhandling them this game. Yeah, and look at the confidence out of Boo Boo Doo Boo just sitting at the top of the map with rockets. He's like, you know, I've got all the cover in the world from my teammates. I don't have to worry about the thing. He's in a bad spot now, and he finally gets taken out. Yeah, and he got Renegade. He was trying to move the flag, but gets taken out as well. I thought that was going to be an opportunity for them to push that all the way across. But Shotzi, he's got something to say about that. He's got the sniper, connects on a body shot, double no scope in the lift. This kid is just incredible, amazing player. Like we said, his arch enemy is going to be Frosty, and those are the same kind of plays that we see Frosty make. Snipe down here, trying to make a smart play, but couldn't get away right there. We do have the sniper in the hands of Mikwin, doing a nice defensive play here. If he can get maybe a few picks, that'll allow NVS to get a more aggressive on the other side of the base, because Splice has just been up in their face the entire game. That's what they need to be doing to them. 
Uh, you know, Envious is a very disciplined team. They're not as much run and gun as Optic. Uh, excellent shot. That's exactly what they need right now, and I want to see them start to fly. I mean, Mikwin is absolutely a top three sniper in this game. You know, it's hard to make an argument otherwise. Just look at that. Starts taking damage. That shot was about to be lined up on that player's head before he got double teamed and taken out there. So the power weapons are down. Most likely they're going to be switching hands over into splices as you shoot or run away with those rockets here. And Shotzi still with the sniper in his pocket. Yeah, and look at the just the knowledge what Shooter needed to do right there. He immediately looked for those players, was getting the cutoff to help Renegade with the flag. He always is relevant to the play at hand. Yeah, and keep in mind, look at this. Two players are playing amazing defense, but they've also got Shotzi in the enemy team's base being a distraction here. Still with that sniper. Now he is going to, you can see in that kill beat, who flies across, gets himself a double kill, and that flag is going to be returned. So amazing job coming out of Envious here as they get a flag cap or a flag pull and starting to move that across the map here, trying to bring this one back and make it a competition. Hook was the reason for everything you just saw right there. Hook absolutely made a play inside the cave, getting the kills that needed to be got while the flag was out and he clutched it. Huge plays out of Hook and the rest of Envious. That is exactly what they need to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, and Mikwin, nice shots there to pick up the kill on the flag carry. You can see the player shows up on radar, but great grenades coming out from Shotzi. Will eventually be cleaned up here, so two to one. Still plenty of time left to play in this game here. And as you can see, Boo Doo Boo just being sneaky here, trying to work with Renegade on that sniper side of the map. But as he gets taken out, we might be seeing a ground pound here momentarily. Yeah, but and he decides to stay alive. Very smart decision by Boo Boo. Just pretty much going to, di you know, distract. Pretty much delay the death. But no, he turns around and gets a kill out of that. That should not have happened. That is a great job by Boo Boo Electing to fight the player, listening to call outs, getting the one shot on the flag, and taking that sniper out of McQuinn's hands. Now he didn't have much ammo left, as you can see. Who grabbed himself another double kill here? Just amazing performance, and we'll see exactly what Envy elects to do here with this new numbers advantage. You can see Renegade, or you can hear those sniper shots. Renegade on the enemy team has the sniper, but just gets taken out. This guy is not missing. He is in the zone right now. Hook <laughs> just absolutely dominating so far. He does get taken out by Boo Boo, though. That is a double kill from Boo Boo. Sniper in the hands of Mikwin with Pistola having the rockets. This is exactly what you want if you are an Envious fan. Yeah, I mean, and that flag is in the window. Envy has still every intention of running this flag, especially when Mikwin has a sniper in his hands. But no, the timing could not have been worse there for Pistola as he goes for the flag with the rockets in his pocket, but gets taken out. So that's going to put a lot of pressure here on Mikwin's shoulders. He needs to be hitting these shots to make sure they can maintain power weapon control here in Envy's base, or excuse me, in Splice's base. Yeah, and look at the miscommunication there from Envious. They were kind of all surrounding the spawns and not necessarily being able to get any organization together and now they are three down that's what happens when you kind of flood the base like that you you don't really go on one side and they just spawn around you and that is game yeah and just like that splice comes out and wins game number one three to one over envy now i know i predicted that but it was honestly a little bit more one-sided than I was even expecting when I was thinking about that game type capture fly Coliseum here. You know, we'll take a look at the game type, or excuse me, at the stats momentarily and find out who was really stepping up and showing off here for those teams. And, you know, wouldn't be surprise me at all. It's just a team effort across the board. You know, I agree with you. I was not expecting that at all. Envious looked so dominant throughout the entire season. You know, they kind of recollected themselves, but, you know, Envious hasn't played a land splice that's this experienced yet. They don't. They didn't know what to expect, and that kind of was, you know, a telltale sign of that. Boo boo doo boo, going off 19, 8, and 9. Just having an incredible game. Uh, you're looking across the board, just a ton of damage out of him, as well as you know the rest of his crew, playing objective. All of them being selfless. That's exactly what you want to see out of a complete team. Uh, they, and they were playing so well, just real smooth. And they were always on top of like getting the returns. 
All right, and then there were a lot of flag grabs for both teams. I think it was equal, but I didn't get long. I didn't glance at it long enough there. But there was a lot of aggression coming out of both teams, and it's not like Envy was doing a whole lot of things wrong that game. It was just splice, just counteracting everything they were trying to do. You know, and speaking of Boo Boo Doo Boo, you know, we should absolutely take a look, a deeper look at this player because this was someone that w really wasn't showing up and performing the best during the pro league. It was really Shotzi and Renegade that would put up those big numbers and stats. But in this game number one. That was all Boo Boo Doo Boo with some amazing routes and then, of course, picking up 19 kills here already. Yeah, I'll admit, you know, I watch a lot of him and he he does get a lot of the short end of the stick a lot of the times online. You know, something just doesn't work out in his way and, and it just doesn't seem like he can go off as hard as he does in a tournament. So, I mean, he definitely is one of those players that once he's under the lights, it actually benefits him. And uh, it was great to see that game. But, you know, his old teammate, Hook, was playing just as well on the other side, clutching it up in that game, but just couldn't pull it out. I, I do expect maybe the next game will be a little bit closer. Yeah, I mean, Hook is just a phenomenal player here for Envy, so I'm definitely looking for everyone on that team to step up, but Hook in particular is a player that can do that. So we've seen him multiple times put up amazing stats. Just look at his KAD here from the Pro League fall season. 2.09, extremely high accuracy, and of course, this player coming over just in 2016, uh, I think it was regionals was the very first time we saw him compete trying to qualify for that world championships. And of course, finishing in the top four in yeah. 2016. He actually gave Optic the biggest run for their money at the time. Yep. Where no one else was doing it, he was doing it. And uh, it was amazing to see he was actually with Boo Boo, Contra, and Devinator back then. But, uh, you know, he came from Call of Duty. He was looking to be a rising star in that, but, you know, not much was going on. I believe it was his age that restricted him from it. So he came over to Halo, and he's been dominating ever since. And it's just been incredible to watch. Uh, it's his game knowledge. You know, Ogre 2 said it. He was amazed at how much knowledge this guy already has coming from a game like Call of Duty over to Halo. He's like, he already knows everything, it seems like. Now, if you're an envious fan, I wouldn't be too concerned quite yet because this is a team that has notoriously been known for a very slow starts to tournament. This to tournaments. This is a team that has consistently dropped down into the elimination bracket and made their runs and even winning events there through the lower half. Yeah, I, I believe it was Daytona. They had the the epic game 14 series where they came back twice and they out. They actually did it to Optic again before that uh, in the HDS finals. So yeah, they can do it. They they have they know how to pretty much take a tournament like a marathon. Yeah, and they know like, it doesn't matter if they lose 50 to 20 or 50 to 49. They know they are always in every single game that they compete in. So I really want to see what Envy is going to do to get back into this one as we are starting off with the wizard himself, Mr. Pistola. And I love this weapon, it's epic. It's just a great moment to have it right now. It, 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 you can do a lot of damage around that corner, but Mikwin's going to help secure that OS right there, see what he can do. He's gonna get super aggressive, probably get up top. I would like to see him maybe get that sniper, but no, he's just gonna fly out at Boo Boo Doo Boo and get some kills with it. But uh, that Hydra still is in the back pocket of Pistola, and that is a good thing to have. He's probably just gonna take a chill pill right now. Yeah, and Embisola, he's been moving around, hasn't had a whole lot of action here, but let's move over to where there will be some action, and that's going to be Mr. Snipe down. Oh, as he barely misses that sniper shot, but that was really a great performance from whoever that was on Splice that was running away. The thrust slide to use the railing to keep his head safe. Yeah, that gave him a haircut for sure. Snipe down, not pretty much, you know, he's not poking out too far because he can absolutely get melted. This is land, you will die in a heartbeat. Player rushing him, he does get the beat down off and a teammate helps him. So great job right there from Snipe down in order to stay alive with this weapon. He's going to challenge and Shotzi has the better shot with the perfect. Great job by him. It is eight to three though, Envious looking good. Yeah, and you can see when you're playing on one of these teams or against one of them, there is zero room for error. As you can see, Snipe Down, he had great shots. His reticle was lined up perfectly, but Shotzi was just a little bit quicker on the trigger and gets the perfect off before him. Man, look at that back of the head shot from Pistola. Perfect accuracy, still kind of just chilling here at the blue bend. He has the Hydra in his back pocket looking just really focusing on communication. Excellent job by him, just being a 
you know, swiveling around like a turret and looking at all of his teammates, seeing if he can help. But he's not really having to do much because his team is in such good positions. Yeah, and you can see a tweet coming in as well. Some people's favorite teams playing couldn't agree more. And Snipe Down, he has found that Cypher Rifle back into his hands, desperately trying to stay alive and escape here. What a great angle we're seeing. This is not one you've seen very often, not even in Pro League, or at least not on stream anyway. 12 to 7 lead here for Envy. So you can just tell, look how safe and passive and use the amount of teamwork that this team is executing on just always being together on one side of the map. Yeah, and it's almost like they have, this is their plan. This is exactly what they've been practicing and they know that works um, because I'm seeing a lot of great movement, a lot of great baiting and switching coming out of Envious right now, but that's going to be two down for Envious. This is a perfect opportunity for Splice to get some map control and do some big things here. Yeah, and as we take a look at Shooter's screen, we'll see from his point of view how Splice is looking to get back into this game. It's only down by two kills. We, this is essentially just almost tied up here. We're going to see the fights for new power weapons soon uh, and power up. So 13 to 13, just as I say, all tied up with that new sniper rifle up. Shotzi grabbing the ammo here. Of course, he was out of that first sniper rifle. And we'll see now that we put the player outlines on, we will see if he's able to find any of these shots. You can see the execution and, and positioning here from Splice as the shooter gets taken out. They need to be careful here. You do not want to turn this weapon over with Splice finally taking the lead here in game number two. Yeah, Envious better not peek. This kid is wild with this weapon. He does some insane things. I've seen clip after clip of everything. Want to miss the first shot, though, not making... But, you know, his positioning, he doesn't have to move here, and he's going to stay alive no matter what. He's amazing at it. There's not much he has to do right here. The other team knows he has the sniper up there, so they're not really going to be pushing quite yet. This is going to be a little bit of a standoff for just until they get, like, a feel of exactly where they can push. This is just going to be a mind game, all mind games. Oh my gosh, he gets melted instantly. This is huge for Envious. Yeah, we'll see uh, what Envious is able to do here. A Renegade, great grenade, takes that player down some. Still in the, the lead here as well. Most likely going to grab another kill. Great melee and thrust backwards from Renegade. Now, I'd like to see how these teams are going to start setting up for this overshield. And sure enough, Splice, great execution on that one. Yeah, and Renegade is just immediately heading towards his teammate, going to help him out. Shotzi with the OS. Let's see if he can implement this the correct way. They pr pretty much know where he is, but that doesn't matter because his entire team is being aggressive, and they drop the sniper for him. I know that's what everybody at home wants to see right now. See this young guy go off and just pretty much be a, like a young highlight reel. And what I'd like to see now is the communication on this Splice squad as we're seeing the largest lead of the game. What started off in Envy's favor is now heavily over towards Splice. Let's go to an Astro list. Hey, hey, hey. Blue 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 Alright, 41. No, I'm just hitting blue. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, what's yeah. 30, 41 of you? I'm gonna get the red. I'm gonna get yeah, the red. yeah, I'm gonna have Hydra. Watch Yo, Blue Alley and Old Samo. Yeah, and Red Nest, guys. They're putting Red Nest. Blue Alley, Blue Alley. I'm gonna kill Mike when I think. One shot, one shot, Blue Alley. Make one. Blue Alley, I'm gonna kill Mike 41. I'm gonna kill Mike 41. Blue Alley, really weak. Blue Alley, two shot. Blue Alley, one shot. Blue Alley, two 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 shot. Blue Alley, one shot, front blue. Got him. Nice. Nice. What do you want? Watch blue red. I'll get it. I'll get it. Go front red. Front red. I'll get it. Yo, he's point pit huke. In pit. In pit. I'm on his side. I'm on his side. Nice. 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 Nice.
And what was once a six kill lead is up to 12 kills as Splice has found two sniper rifles, one in the hands of Shotzi, the other here in Boo Boo Doo Boo's hands. And they are just having their way with NB and almost the no scope headshot. Boo Boo Doo Boo, if you were watching his picture in picture there, you could see there was so much frustration. He grabbed his forehead after he died there. And that is with them having an 11 kill lead. So these guys are clearly looking to play this tournament to perfection. Yeah, they really expect a lot of themselves. They want the win. I was talking to Boo Boo, you know, he, he, they're down in the ranks in the, in the pro league, but I was talking to him and he was like, he's, he's still the champion. He's like, oh, I don't care. We're winning this, no problem. So that's exactly what you saw from that. He really wants to win this tournament and he expects to. Oh, absolutely. So up by still 11 kills, maintaining this lead. Four and a half minutes left to play. It'll be interesting to see if Slice just keeps this uh, pressure and aggression on or elects to try to use the time to their advantage. We'll see. Puka's got that sniper rifle now. Only four shots, though, and pushes out a little bit too early. Two members for Team Envy go down once again, and we're getting to the point of no return here in this game number two. Yeah, and I don't want to be, you know, starting any drama or nothing, but man, I was seeing some envious players yawning. So I, these young guys over on Splice, they're not doing any yawning. You know, they've got all the energy in the world. Renegade got the snipe. That is just so overwhelming when you have so many players landing headshots after headshots, and you have multiple people on the team carrying around a sniper at the same time. It almost feels like you can't go anywhere on the map. Oh, I couldn't agree more here. Snipe down. He's doing what he can to get back into this one. Was hoping he'd find a sniper rifle on the ground there. Not recognizing Renegade was, in fact, out of ammo with that one. So 46 to 32. Still just a real tough place to be in. And especially when Boo Boo Doo Boo's got that overshield and coming on with a collapse. Two players in front of him both now are taking no shields. I think that's three players now over here hiding in Turbine. And Boo Boo Doo Boo is not scared at all. Yeah, that was some confidence. He is just wanting to end this game. Two more kills. He just he trusts in his teammates and he flies. Flying and fiving is a huge part of winning this game. Yeah, 49. There's only one kill left, and especially here on Eden, with so many lines of sight and collapse opportunities. I think we're seeing the last kill as Boo grabs himself yet another sniper kill here and just takes the game 52. What was the 32? It wasn't close. <laughs> no, it definitely was not close at all. And wow, Envy, they've got to be feeling that one here now. That is a tough place to be in finding themselves down 0-2 to the defending Atlanta champions. But like I said, even if they fall in this series, which I think they can turn it around still here right now, I, I'm, I still you can never count them out. The fact that they've been able to make those lower bracket runs so many times before. And of course, it was 50 36 is what we're looking at as that final score. Yeah, and Boo Boo, 12 10 and 8. Just a really complete game out of him, but a powerhouse performance from Renegade, dropping 16 kills for his team. Looking over at the damage, though, Renegade putting up 2,500. The accuracy was just through the roof. For the rest of the players, 66 percentage for Shotzi with look at how many power weapon kills. Oh my gosh, that's 10 power weapon kills to Envious's one. That is incredible, actually. And you know, at one point when that lead did become the largest, it was two sniper rifles in the hands of Splice. And even then, of course, multiple overshields going in favor of Splice that game as well. So the execution there, Coach Phil is on top of his game and Splice. They clearly, their strategy and preparation coming into this tournament looks like it's starting to pay off. They did not want to give anything away. And sure enough, they're catching Envy here off guard. Yeah, Coach Phil seems like he's a master strategist. I just get that vibe when we were hearing him in the interview, when you hear him talk. He's just, he's preparing for everything. He really is like, he's the, he's the fifth player of the team, but he also is almost like kind of the commander. He's really got all of these long-term goals ahead of him, and I really like that about him. That's what you want to see from a professional coach. But uh, Renegade, let's talk about how aggressive he was that game. He had six beatdowns on Eden. That's crazy. It is a wide open map. How do you get in the face of people that much, especially on land where you can instantly just get taken out by a team? How do you how do you get up in their face that much? That is ridiculous. He's just flying at them, and he he doesn't think anyone's as good as him. You can see it in his eyes. Look at him. He, he's, I'm the best in the world. That's what he thinks. 
Well, I don't know if he necessarily thinks that, but you can tell he's not scared of anyone. That's for sure. I mean, he believes if he has the first shot, he's going to win that battle. He's an insane amount of confidence. He is an incredible player, and it's hard to take him out. I mean, he's absolutely in the top 10, going down to the top five, and then you've got, you know, especially nowadays, the level of competition we are seeing here is just absolutely absurd. And when Envy is losing 50 to 36 in this game type, not being able to control that power weapon at all. Like you pointed out, only one to the how many that we saw from Splice? Ten. Ten from Splice. So nine additional power up and kills. Basically keeping a numbers advantage almost all game and helping to secure multiple more overshields for themselves as opposed to what Envy was able to grab. Yeah, and that is key. That is the name of the game. That is Halo. You need to be in control of those. You need to have map positioning or else you're, you're just not going to have a chance. And when the level is this high, when you've got the pretty much two of the best teams in the world playing against each other. That's that's pretty much all there is, really. The communication is always going to be there. The shots are all going to be on. It's all about who's going to acquire what. Yeah, and take a look at the series layout. So two convincing wins here already in this round three of championship bracket as we're going to take a look at Plaza Strongholds. Now, Nighty, how do you think this stronghold is going to play out? We saw the Coliseum already uh, capture the flag in uh, in Splice's favor, they're definitely the aggressive team that loves to pull flags here, but Strongholds, what do you think is going to happen? Well, man, it is really hard to say because Splice is a momentum team. They just gain so much. Uh, their power level is just surging right now, so they Almost could just bulldoze. Yeah, there you go. Over 9,000 is just going to surge over Envious and possibly take the three up. Yeah, and I want to start this one off with Shotzi. So Splice, clearly, can they continue this momentum here? Shotzi himself, speaking with him yesterday, clearly looking to make this a quick 3-0, and we'll see how this plaza plays out. All right, and I like this play from Shotzi, immediately getting in a great position, not even worrying about his shot whatsoever. He knew he was going to take down that first player. Yeah, I mean, and those shots are incredible, but who answers back with some amazing shots of himself? That camo is still up. Neither team able to secure that one quite yet. The only, of course, stronghold being captured is his bottom center so far, but Envy quickly looking to take this one back as Snipedown was able to grab that. And this is a player you've got to worry about because he's also got the shotgun, grabs himself the first kill on Renegade. He needs to stay alive here. Yeah, this is a deadly combo to have. Splice, I think, lost him, and that is bad news, Bears. They are you're going to be worried about him for a while. He is proving that to them. Three down for Splice. Snipedown doing an incredible job playing it smart. This is exactly what they need. This is a very good spot right here. We've seen it time and time again. Old Rami himself put, putting a, putting himself in that position with the shotgun. He's just playing it smart right now with the camo, getting some information for his team. It's out now, so he's just going to push up. That's going to be two down for Envious, though, so he needs to make a play. Yeah, and you can see Nesco's over there to Splice, and with Snipe down dying, he still had that shotgun out of with no ammo in his back pocket, so that's going to go, be going on respawn here as well. Of course, coming up in the yard. Now Envy still with that lead, maintaining control. We'll see if that shotgun plays a factor in any of these upcoming battles here momentarily. Pook, he's got that battle rifle here now, fighting over towards this great shot. You can just tell these kids, none of these guys are scared of anyone else. They're all so confident in their own individual shots. Yeah, and I loved what he was doing right there. He was basically disengaging after he knew he couldn't get the kill each time. And that's exactly what you want to see is him staying alive a little bit longer, a little bit longer. That is how the top level of Halo is played. Pistola getting a nice kill. Let's see if he's going to get a nice position for his team to hold on to the rest of this game because they are it's starting to look a little scary for Splice. Oh, and just look at that route Pistola just took there. He did not walk into the stronghold, did not want to give away his position whatsoever. Ever, but no, he drops down and tries to take out Boo Boo Doo Boo. But Boo Boo Doo Boo with that battle rifle and perfect shots picks up that kill. And the real question is, where is that camo? We knew it was late. It's still up here on the map. Envy's trying to grab it, but they jump past it. Looks like Pistola here is trying to contest. Shooter gets taken out. It is still up. One of the latest ones we've seen here at that first respawn before uh, between these two teams or two top seeded teams like we have here. And I don't even know if anyone's been able to secure that. I believe it was, in fact, burnt here. So we'll see uh, around that 9, 25, 9, 30 second mark, 9 and a half, 
uh, minute mark and if they're able to secure that one finally. Yeah, and if Splice could have stayed alive with that camo and really put it to use, that could have really helped them get back into this. But great job by Envious fighting it for it and not letting it go. Snipe down with the shotgun. That is his weapon for this map. He understands what it can do in this stronghold game type. It really can just shut down an entire area of the map. Oh, you're absolutely correct, and you sniped that. He already had that shotgun at first, picked up multiple kills with it, and is putting it to use pretty effectively once again before it get take, before being taken out. But the good news is, is Envy, with that initial control and winning the opening strategy here of this game, they've been able to accumulate about, you know, halfway of this game, or, you know, 46 points on the board already. So now it's all up to Splice. How can they answer back? How much time are they going to be able to grab when they have control? And it wasn't as much as we saw Envy initially get. Well, you see now they're down in numbers. So basically, Envious is just not wanting to get picked. Like right here, Pistola cannot go down. That was a huge, huge play for Splice. And now they're going to be able to push up on the map and probably take back control. But no, Snipe down with this shotgun is possibly going to get a triple kill. No, he decides to go wow. for the smarter play, not the highlight. He went for the teamwork play. He's, I need to buy time, I need to be a distraction, and we will still be accumulating points here in this stronghold. And that shotgun, I mean, a few of those shots have been assists, but he's got six or seven power weapon kills this game alone. Clearly not happy about how Eden played out. And Pistola just being a little sneaky, sneaky beaver here. That's exactly what he's always been good at, being very unpredictable. Shotzi just hiding there on the car. Looks like Camo was picked up, and that player is going to disappear. And I think if he can hold on to this, no, he's going to get cleaned up by Boo Boo Dubu. So a very clutch kill by Boo Boo. This is the time where you want to see Splice possibly get it together. They need to start slaying a little bit harder if they're going to come back here. Yeah, great shots from Boo Boo Dubu. Grabs himself one kill. Amazing shots again for a double. Now that he's going to try to recapture bottom center, you can see who gets in that over by the Prius, trying to contest this. They will pick up a reset. But now there's three members of Splice here around bottom center. So much action happening. Keep in mind, Sipedown died with that shotgun, so it probably has respawn back in the yard. The question is, is any player going to push over there to actually grab that weapon? Because Envy already sitting at 82 points now. Splice is starting to run out of time. Yeah, and all that momentum seemed to have been shut down by Snipe Down's shotgun. He pretty much just got into their heads with that thing because they were getting taken out one by one. But guess what? They switched it up. They realized what they needed to do. They needed to get control of that weapon. Yeah, and we'll see when that new camo comes up, who's able to secure this, because it's probably going to be the last one we see this game, because Envy has hit that 90-point mark, and Splice, and Renegade here in particular, with that shotgun, seeing if he can put it to use, like we saw from Mr. Eric Rona here just a few moments ago. They need to make moves now. Shooter gets a kill. That's going to open up the map here a little bit for Splice, but no Renegade gets dropped almost immediately. Hook do an amazing job dodging shots, creating 1v1s by the end. Angles on the map he is taking, and they might just see Envy go ahead and take this game. And sure enough, what was once a, or about to be a quick 3-0 in favor of Splice, Envy is finally starts to wake up here and puts a win on the board. You know, you made a reference earlier to over 9,000. Um, I think Envy is, uh, if they're if they're Vegeta, they just turned into the big gorilla thing because they are ready to take this series. I mean, they are like a tiger. Once they get in into a corner, that's when they're the strongest. We've seen it three times, I think. No, yeah, yeah three times At least before. Three times. So they are ridiculously dangerous in this situation, and that's when uh, a, a kind of an underexperienced team like Splice, they, that might be a curveball for them. Yeah, I mean, and you pointed out power weapons in the last game. Power weapon kills this game 7 to 0 in favor of Team Envious. So that goes to show you exactly why these teams focus on the weapons and focus on the power-ups. And it is because those are the things that determine who wins games, you know, over 90% of the time. If you take a look at some of the replays here, I'm sure a lot of shotgun kills will show up as well here. And of course, amazing shots from everyone in this game, but a very, very convincing performance in game number three here. And like we said, you can never count Envy out. Gosh, that shotgun bottom middle, that is not something you want to just fall into. But Envious doing a fantastic job, staying, you know, staying chill, talking to each other, communicating, 
taking it one game at a time. I mean, that was pretty much it. Maybe they were more confident in that game type, and the next two might be even better ones for them. So this, this might be bad for Spice. Yeah, let's take a look, a little bit of a look at Snipe Down. He was the player with the most kills in this game, sitting at 16 and 8, so double positive here, not counting those assists. And you can see exactly why he puts those kind of stats on the board. They're extremely high accuracy, 2.27 KAD, extremely high, especially considering those stats are pulled from the NA Pro League, some of the best teams in the world here and is competing for quite some time now on many different rosters. Well, you can tell me a lot more about this, is that I think he's just reached a different level where he does it all. And it's pretty incredible to see. Look at that. He just had a great moment of slaying ability, was in control of the shotgun the whole game, but also he was on top of all of the objective. He did more objective than anybody in the game. I mean, he took over that entire game. So, we're, you know, what, what has changed? Like, has he just taken that leadership role? Like from the days when you were competing with him. What's up, man? I mean, he, he's always been improving. He's always been one of the top players here. And there are, if you want to win tournaments here in Halo 5, you cannot have those many divided roles. It just doesn't work like that anymore. Everybody needs to be able to do everything. You can move across the map just so quickly with thrust, with sprint, uh, you know, sliding. You can just you know, appear anywhere. You, different elevations are easily uh, clamorable, so you can go just do any go anywhere and do anything and everyone on the team needs to be able to do that yeah and before you would probably see him like sitting back with a snipe or you know even just kind of playing the sneaky flank role that's a lot what have I, what I saw him in Halo 3 uh, even in reach but uh, now he he is he loves to fly, and right, that's exactly what you need. I'll take a look at Shooter here. As I actually coached Shooter for a while, he were back when he was on Team Liquid, and of course, taking a look at his stats, Atlanta placing first. Not as high of a KAD as we've seen some other players, but one thing I want to point out about Shooter is the kills that he does get. Even in Atlanta, even in Pro League, he might be even in a game, but those kills, those five, ten kills that he got were extremely clutch kills. They were flag stops and flag returns and, and you know, a death sticky nade that buys enough time for, for Shotzi and Renegade to fly in and do their thing. So Shooter, he's, he's absolutely the, the spinal cord here, or the backbone of this Splice team, especially considering there's a lot of young players here, and I think Coach Phil and Shooter do an amazing job working together here to keep everyone here on the same page. Yeah, uh, Shooter, I've been competing against him for a long time, and he is exactly that, just a very clutch individual. But I am looking forward to this game type. Uh, th you know, this might go a little bit in Envious's favor because this is an old map. Yeah, and I want to start this one off here with Renegade. This is a player that is going to be always just so aggressive, flying into the base, immediately pushing out pink side, and he is going to be the one trying to contest this camo and getting into the battles here with those envious members. Almost taken to no shield, but he's buying enough time here. He really wants to get this weapon. Great grenade, finishes it up with the pistol shot onto none other than Pistola. Make that a double kill as he takes out Hoop, and already Splice is starting to get Envy trapped over here towards their own bubble. Yeah, and nothing gets like by this man. He is always putting damage in people, always pretty much being that blocker for Splice. He, you just you have to get past Renegade before you want to do anything. And he was doing exactly that. Now they're being a little slow on this flag. I can't see them possibly grabbing this unless they can get some pretty big kills here. Yeah, absolutely. Shooter playing this one very slowly. Wants to get across the map with his thrust, but Envy, they knew what was happening and they were prepared for it. They buy themselves some time here, but that flag is moving into the base from Shotzi. One minute is all it takes, and Splice already in this lead looking to close out this series. Perfect shots on the Pistola right there. A little Shotzi versus Pistola. That's exactly what a lot of people want to see. Shotzi moving up immediately, putting shots on top middle. Top middle is a huge place to be on this map. This guy never stops. He's just going and going and going. He's no shields, and he's continuing to look around to help his teammates. That's going to be two down for Envious. They're going to be fresh spawn on the car side trying to do something. And take a look at this. Shotzi has more kills than Envious has right now. That is how Don Dominant Splice is being in this game here. Just non-stop teamwork left and right. The most kills coming out from anyone on NBA is Snipe Down and Mikwin with two apiece. One kill for Hook and Pistola so far. Yeah, and Shooter just playing it slow here, looking for some players, trying to play defense at the moment. He knows how important that guy is top middle, how much that guy can do against 
his player, so he's pretty much just blocking, making sure that player can't get into his base, and that is going to be the second flag. All right, now what I'd like to do is go into an Astro Listen in here with uh, Envy to see what are they going to do to get back into this game before they go sent to the elimination bracket. Under the base with a shot. Yeah, he's gonna kill me. He killed me. He's already landing. I'm dying from car. The car right now. Under the base. 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 All right, and there you have it. Such a fast game number four here. Splice not happy about dropping even one game and comes out with an amazing performance. Heavily, heavily out slaying Envy. Envy just could not get their footing at all that game. 34 to 16 as far as overall slays go. That is just incredible. Splice making a statement here this far into the championship bracket and doing this to the team that finished third in Atlanta. And I know a lot of people, including myself, was expecting really big things from. Yeah, and I don't want to point out the obvious, but there is a breadstick from one of my favorite players of all time. That just goes to show, I mean, Envious looks so dominant and, and yet an overwhelming performance out of Splice right there. To do that to two of the best players in the world Pook died 10 times, Pistola died 10 times, and they only had five kills between the two of them. That was such a quick game. That was ridiculous. And even the kills they did get were hard fought kills. Like Mikwin picked up a couple on your on broadcast there towards the end and barely getting the perfect off before, before being taken out himself. So it's pretty incredible that, that, that we even saw it. There was almost some gooses happening here, like you pointed out. Splice is proving why their strategy and their preparation coming into this event is paying off. And Envy do fall to the elimination bracket, but the real question I want to ask you gentlemen is, can they bounce back? Do you think this is an Envy squad that can take that loss, look at what went wrong, and maybe battle through the elimination bracket? Oh, 100% they are. I mean, they've done it every single tournament we've seen from them. They've always uh, just basically fallen down early on and have made those runs, just knocking everyone out of the elimination bracket. Wait a minute, bracket I don't coming up. Have they won a tournament without being in the loser's bracket? I don't think they've won through winner's bracket. No, I don't think so. Even yeah, I'd have in, to check uh, that one. In Vegas, when they beat uh, Liquid in the finals, it was from the elimination bracket as well. Sheesh. They are the elimination bracket kings, uh, but we actually want to talk to some of the Splice players because they are the real players. But we'll get an interview that is uh, ready shortly. I think Strongside's just dishing around and he's getting... Uh, Getting ready. It's not quite there, though, so I'll carry on talking to you guys instead. Um, Splice looked really hot in that series, and we were questioning whether they would turn up, whether it would be the Splice that we saw from Atlanta, or whether it's going to be the Splice we saw from four finals. Do you think they now have the potential to get to maybe a win here at Denver? Well, I mean, also, we didn't expect... Uh, you know, them to be so dominant against Envious because they hadn't played each other. We didn't know what what to expect. Yeah. We, we didn't know what we were going to see. We thought maybe it would be like a, uh, you know, a rock, paper, scissors, where, you know, Envious actually has Splice's number, whereas Optic can't do as much against them. But no, that wasn't the case. Splice can obviously do, you know, big things against both teams, and they are super confident no matter who they're playing against. Also, can we lower your chair slightly? Because you make both me and Elamite look tiny. I know we are tiny, <laughs> but you make it even worse. You make it prominent. Now everyone knows I'm only five foot... Nine, ten. We'll add an extra inch. Speaking of extra inches, let's speak to Strongside and Boo Boo Doo Boo over on the floor. All right, thank you, Dan Gaskin. Yep, here with Boo Boo Doo Boo. 
Incredible win. Man, you guys came in guns blazing in game one and game two. Tell me a little bit about like what your guys' strategy was going up against Envious because you made it look quite easy in game one and two. I uh, think usually when we play Envy, we know they're a very like slay-heavy team and they play more traditional Halo. So I think the fact that we knew that in the back of our heads, we knew they were all, always going to be snipe side on Kali. We knew they were going to go back to their flag on Truth and not OE. And it really helped us a lot um, just doing that. And then game three, you guys lost that. But game four, you guys answered back. And that was an incredibly fast CTF game, about four minutes. I mean, what was the strategy there? Have you been watching like Team Envious and what they do on CTF there? Or what was the strategy there? I think it's more just our one of our best maps, Truth, overall. Shotzi and Renegade have like two of the nastiest pistols um, in the game. So honestly, it's just one of our best game types. For some reason, we just really know how to play it. So when you guys lost that game, it seemed like you guys were really well composed. And that seems like kind of like what you guys do. You guys don't really get flustered too often. I mean, what keeps you guys so just like emotionally like detached there and not letting that get to you like who's on the who's on the team like keeping you guys together is it or is it all of you i mean it's all of us we've all been competing for a while we know we're not going to win every single game and we know like anything is possible uh we told each other after game two going into game three we're gonna have to keep it at 110 percent. we can't let up even though we're up 2-0 we got to keep going our hardest to beat them all right well next up you're either going to be facing off against optic or team liquid if you had to choose, who would you want to face off against and why? Uh, it really doesn't matter to me, honestly. Whoever wins that will face them. Uh, I'm just ready to play Halo again. Just wants to play Halo. That's it. He just wants to play, wants to win. boo boo doo everyone. Back to you guys. Everyone wants to play Halo, and there has been a lot of Halo being played here at DreamHack Denver. Of course, we've had the free-for-all that's been going on as well. I think we're down to the last 48 players now, some of the notable players left. Uh, we have Gilkey, Brainstorm, Rhino, uh, JRZ, and Rob the Turtle still there, so maybe he'll achieve something this event. But we want to uh, thank BenQ as well for all of their obligations. Of course, they sponsored this event. They are the monitor sponsors, uh, so we'd like to thank those guys for all of your help as the official monitor sponsor for the HCS Fall Season Pro League. Without them, of course, none of this would happen. So big thumbs up to you guys. But OK, let's talk maybe about the next match that's going to be coming up on the stream for you guys. It's going to be Infused versus Straight Rippin. Oh, baby. Winner gets top six, loser goes home. Initial thoughts just before we jump into that one. Well, I know how excited you are about it. And I'm actually pretty excited, too, because this is, this is an underdog. I mean, obviously, Infused are amazing. They've been doing incredible over in Europe. And they also do amazing when they come over here. But I mean, this is still that story that you want to see, like where the underdogs beat the professionals. You know, straight ripping. They have Ace. You know, the Ace has been at the top forever. And I mean, everybody likes a good, a good story, you know? And this is, this is the, the big one. This is definitely a big test here for Infuse to see what they can come out and do, making that run for the top six, something we do not see very often and, and something we've kind of just been asking for the last two years, like when is Europe finally going to show up? I know we throwing some shade out there earlier. I don't know if everyone caught that, but I definitely did as well. And you know, rightfully so, because Europe did come out and they are performing. And yeah, we're seeing them get knocked out. Of course, Supremacy falling to Straight Rippin three to two, but that was the second seeded team. Now we're seeing Straight versus the number one seeded team here coming out of Europe. So that's going to be a huge test for both of those squads. A huge match, and we will see if Straight are able to move forward into the top six or whether it's going to be infused. That's going to be coming up next on your screen. So make sure you don't touch those browsers. Make sure you let your Family know, let your dog know, let your cat know, let everyone know. Get in this stream, twitch.tv forward slash halo or mixer.com forward slash halo. Let's get hyped. Let's see who's going to make the top six. We'll be back after this.